All right, we're going to take a look at Pascal's triangle and its relationship to combinatorics. Um, so, 17th century, Blaise Pascal, mathematician, philosopher, um, you know, guys were multifaceted back then. Um, he, uh, he kind of worked with, developed this triangle and, some, and understood some of the patterns and, uh, that, that were in it and how they related to combinatorics. And we've used that um, within our probability combinatorics areas uh, to facilitate some understandings. Uh, it is n we're Eurocentric uh, in most of our stuff. So yes, uh, other cultures did develop this beforehand. Blaise Pascal did not in was not the first to discover this pattern. Just he popularized it in Western mathematics. Um, so. The way it works out is that uh, you start with the number one and then you take numbers and you kind of add these two numbers. So realistically, there'd be a, if there was a zero, zero here, because there's no numbers there, zero plus one is one. One plus zero is one. And then afterwards, uh, the same idea, we have one and then that imaginary zero, imagine there's a zero there, one and one add together, and then one and one, or sorry, one and zero, then one and one add to two. And then we have our one here, and then one plus two is three, two plus one is three, and then the one and the zero. Um, so the zeros we generally ignore, uh, and you see the pattern, hopefully that's emerging, in that each number is, e each number is a, is a sum of the two numbers above it. So 1 plus 3 is 4. Again, our 1 just comes down. 3 plus 3 is 6. 3 plus 1 is 4. And then the 1 is just there. And then it continues down. 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. There's a 1 there. 1, uh, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, 1. And they would just kind of trickle their way down. And then this continues indefinitely um, in this pattern. And so when we're working with Pascal's triangle, uh, there's a whole bunch of different patterns that emerge in here. You, If you look uh, along the diagonals, it's 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So it's going up by 1s. Or it's going up by 0. Then it's going up by ones. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then it's going up by uh, two, three, four, five. The next one would go up by six. Um, and so there's that pattern that emerges uh, as you go down these diagonals, and it works both ways. Uh, this goes up by three, and then six, and then it goes up by ten. Uh, so there's three, six, ten. Um, so it's going up. In these kind of patterns that start emerging, and there's a few other patterns uh, that emerge. We'll take we can take a look at um, when we're talking about Pascal's triangle. We call the this here. So each row, each line on the page, that's row zero, row one, row two, row three, row four, row five, row six. So we start our numbering at zero, and there's an important reason why, um, and that is because if you take the numbers in any row and calculate uh, the sum. So this sum is a one. The sum here is two. The sum here is four. And then eight. And then 16. And then this one is 32. And then this one is 64. And what's special about these numbers is that these are all powers of two. So this is 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3, 2 to the 4, 2 to the 5, and 2 to the 6. So you see their powers of 2. So row 6, 2 to the power of 6. Row 5, 2 to the power of 5. Row 4, 2 to the power of 4, so on and so forth. So the sum of any row in Pascal's triangle is 2 to the power of that row number. Now, in terms of notation that we often use for representing these. Um, 
we use the notation with the T, uh, so term notation, so term zero, zero. It's in row zero, position zero. So row position. So row position is a setup, T1. Row one, position zero. Row two, or sorry, row one, position one. Row two, position zero. Row two, position one. Row two, position two. And then so on and so forth. So we use this uh, terminology. And this allows us to make a, uh, a generic um, equation to determine any subsequent number. So if you add the term in row n, uh, position R to the term in row N, position R plus 1, you will get the term N plus 1 uh, in row N plus 1 and the uh, position R plus 1. And NR is the standard sequence here uh, because it's going to connect with our combinations. So if we look here, if we take the um, term 2, 0, so N is 2, R is 0, and then n and r plus 1, so n is still 2, r plus 1 is 1, we're going to get n plus 1, which is 3, and r plus 1, which is 1. So these two add to here is what that means. And this also works out with combinations. Zero items, choose zero items. There's only one way to choose nothing from nothing. That is 1. 1 choose 0 is equal to 1. 1 choose 1 is equal to 1. And this works its way down all the way. So if we get to the 3's here, 3 choose 1. So 3 choose 1, there's 3 options. There's 3 choose 2, there's 3 choose 3. 3 choose 0. So this would be 6 choose 1, 6 choose 2, 6 choose 3, 6 choose 4, 6 choose 5, 6 choose 6. And there's that pattern of go up to a point and then down. So alternating rows, even rows have a center number, odd rows uh, have two center numbers. Um, and so relating our combinations here to terms, if you take any term, uh, C uh, with NR and then NR plus 1, right? So same idea with our terms above. If we take 2 choose 0 and then 2 choose 1, that adds up to 2 plus 1 is 3. And then the R again was 0 plus 1 is 1, so 3 choose 1. And that gets our term 3 choose 1, which is 6. So they all work out uh, with multiple patterns. Um, and then you'll recognize there's some patterns in there, like if you take uh, the hockey stick pattern is what I like to call it. I think some people call it the L pattern. But if you go down a diagonal and then you make like a little L, and this works in the opposite direction as well if you went this way. These three numbers, one, two, three, the parts on the shaft of the stick equal the number on the blade. So one plus two plus three is six. And if you went and looked at any row here, we could pick another row and do, um, say this here, pattern. So right here, if we pick this, one plus two is three, plus three is six, plus four is 10, plus five is 15. So you make this little hockey stick and you'll, whatever's in the diagonal will add to the blade, um, going the opposite on the opposite diagonal. Now this method of Pascal's can be used to find grid roots, uh, or the number of, if we're given a grid, we can follow along that grid and follow the paths um, and use Pascal's method to tally that up. So in the example here, we'll see that uh, we got Roycey is traveling to a friend's house five blocks south. So we got Roycey's house up here and we're traveling five blocks south and six blocks east. Notice I got one, two, three, four, five, six blocks or six points out because this is our house so it travels one block two blocks three blocks we're starting counting at zero um, and then the same here there's seven because we're starting counting at zero so there's one way for her to be at her house 
And then from her house, she got she has one way to travel down this path, one way to travel to this point. And we're never going to backtrack. We're always going towards our friends. We don't want to like go backwards and forwards along these blocks. Um, so now as we continue, we go from here to here, there's one path. But to get to here, there's this path or this path. So there's a total of two different ways that she could have got to there. And then there's one path to get to here. Now to get to here, there's one path. To get to here, there's one, and then there was two ways to get to here, so there's a total of three. Same idea here, three, two, and one. One path to get to here. And so you see uh, the Pascal's triangle starting to emerge. One path to get to here, four here, six here, four here, one here, one here, five here, 10, 10, five, one. To here, six paths, 15 paths, 10 and 15, or sorry, 10, 10 and five. 10 and 10 makes 20, 10 and five, 15 and six. And now we're gonna kind of stagger because we have a different, we're not balancing out like the full Pascal's triangle, so we're gonna uh, stunt the Pascal's triangle a bit to get to here. Six paths to get to here, and 15, six to 15 is 21. 35, 35, 21, seven, one path to get to here. And then we got 56, 70, 56, uh, 28, and um, to get to here, we have our seven, and so our, sorry, our seven's there. Um, to get to here, we have 56 and 70, so that's gonna be 126. Here, 126, 56 and 28 is gonna give us 84 paths here. Uh, 126 and 126 is gonna give us 252. And then uh, 200 and one, uh, 10, 210. And then 252 and 210 gives us a total of uh, 462. So this point here, to get here, there's 462 possible paths that Royce could follow. So we can use a grid like this, and this works especially when we have like broken grids. So if we had a grid, maybe something like this. Uh, where it's broken, this works well because we can't count uh, or we can't use other methods very well. But um, in total on a, on a clean grid like this, we have an option, uh, second option. So if it's just so many blocks east, so many block, uh, blocks south, um, something set up like this, well, we look at it and say, well, she's got to travel a total of 11 blocks. In total, she's got five blocks south she's going to travel, whichever way she choose, whichever ones she chooses, she's going to be traveling one, two, three, four, five blocks south, or one, two, three, four, five blocks south, or one, two, three, four, and five blocks south. Whatever she chooses, she's got five blocks south to go. Um, and then she's got another six blocks east to travel. So if we do 11, choose the five blocks that she goes south, then she's got six blocks left and we're gonna choose six uh, blocks to travel. So six, choose six. So she's traveled her five blocks south, or she's uh, out of those total 11 blocks she has to travel, we've picked which ones were gonna go south and then we're left with six blocks left that she has to travel. We chose the six that she's doing and uh, 11 choose 5 is going to be 462 times 626 is 1. We get 462. Again, the same answer in both cases. So this is just an alternative way of doing that. Um, and so we can use Pascal's method on grid roots. Another use of Pascal's triangle is when we're doing binomial expansion. Um, so we're a little bit of algebra here. I know that's not our primary focus, but we do have occasions for using algebra, and you've done some of this before. So if you have something like a squared, or a plus b squared, sorry, um, you know, we're doing, uh, we're foiling that out uh, in, in when we're doing it. So when we calculate that, we work it out, we do uh, a plus b times a plus b, and that, so if we foil that, first times first, uh, 
plus first times la uh, last, the outside terms, a b plus a b, the inside terms, and we're putting in alpha order, uh, plus b times b, the outside terms, or the, yeah, the, uh, the last terms in each bracket. So we get a squared plus two a b plus b squared as a standard. And if I just rewrite this a little bit with, with a number up front, one a squared plus two a b plus one b squared. Okay, uh, if we do cubed, well, we're gonna have a plus b squared times a plus b. And I'm just breaking that off because then I can reuse this. So we have a squared plus two a b plus b squared times a plus b. And so again, when we're, when we're expanding by uh, these uh, polynomials, we're multiplying everything in one bracket by everything in the other bracket. So we're gonna end up with a cubed and then plus two a squared uh, b, a, that's a times a plus b, uh, or a times b. And then here, plus a b squared. And then we multiply by the b's, plus a squared b plus 2ab squared plus b cubed. We'll collect some like terms and simplify this. a cubed, and then we have ab Sorry, squared, and there goes my Alexa, um, plus 3a squared b. We add those up, we add these guys up, plus 3a squared b plus b cubed. And again, if I write it the same as down here, one a cubed plus three a squared b plus three a squared b, uh, sorry, that shouldn't be a squared, that should be b squared. Um, my, my bad, b squared, a b squared, and b cubed, one b cubed. Now look at the numbers here, one, two, one, one, three, three, one. One, two, one, one, three, three, one. These here, uh, this is called the uh, binomial theorem. And the binomial theorem says that, this is binomial theorem says that if we have x plus y to the power of n, then the expansion works out where it's n choose zero times x to the n, y to the zero, plus n choose one times x to the n minus one, y to the one. All the way down till we get to n choose n, x to the zero, y to the n. So what's happening is we have n choose zero, n choose one, n choose two, n choose three, n choose four, n choose five, n choose six. That's gonna be the number out front, which happens to be the binomial, uh, or sorry, the row, the, the whatever row we're working with. So if we have um, n to the power of two, that's row two, one, two, one. n to the power of three, one, three, three, one. So it's that row of Pascal's triangle, that's gonna be the coefficient in front of each number. And then the x portion, it's gonna start at whatever n is and count its way down. So if we had the fourth row, it'd be four, three, two, one, zero. And then the y would start at zero and count its way up to four. So let's actually do uh, another example here with the binomial theorem. Uh, oh, sorry, this is the, any term in general is this. So you can find any term, it's just, uh, the generalized form of it. But um, if I gave you x plus y to the power of 6, well, then we work our way through that sixth row. So 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, and 1. Those are the coefficients. So the first coefficient is 1 and then x to the power of six, y to the power of zero, 
plus. And then we go to the next term, which would be 6 for the coefficient, x to the 5, y to the 1, plus the next coefficient is 15, x to the 4, y to the 2. So I bring the x down, I bring the, the power on the y up. Plus uh, 20 is next, 20x to the 3, y to the 3. Plus 15x to the 3, y to the, f or sorry, x to the 2, y to the 4. Plus, and I'm just going to continue down here, x, or sorry, 15, then the next one is 6, x to the 1, y to the 5, plus 1, x to the 0, y to the 6. So you see the x, the coefficients, 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, 1. The x exponent went 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And the y went 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And this would actually simplify down to just x to the 6 plus 6x to the 5y plus 15x to the 4y to the 2 plus 20x to the 3y to the 3 plus 15x squared y to the 4 plus 6xy to the 5 plus y to the 6. So without having to do our expansions like this, and then this, and then for power 4, then power 5, power 6, we can use the Pascal's triangle, the binomial theorem, to expand binomials um, using combinatorics. And then you can apply that uh, in some of the questions that you'll be getting.